Hi folks, I'm Tom Taylor and a very warm welcome for those of you that can join us this morning uh, to this introductory AMP 101 with uh, uh, Eric Lindley. And uh, just before we kick off, there is a, a live chat in the corner of the event page. If you have any questions for Eric, uh, we can run through some of those uh, at the end of the session. So Eric, over to you. Great, thanks. All right, so let me get my screen up here to present. So uh, yeah, as Tom mentioned, I'm a product manager on AMP. And I'm here to give a high level introduction to what AMP is, a little bit of why it is, and some of what you can do with it. So whether this is the first time you're hearing about AMP or know a small piece, um, but don't have an idea of what the whole ecosystem looks like, uh, hopefully this is going to be a good starting point. So in a mobile-first world, uh, speed is really important. We need fast websites to effectively reach and engage users. And users confirm this every day by not engaging with uh, and even giving up on slow sites. And despite over half of users abandoning slow sites, uh, over 75% of sites on mobile take 10 or more seconds to load on a 3G connection, and significantly longer on non-3G connections. Uh, in fact, you've probably been frustrated with slow-loading websites yourself. Uh, and on top of that, they often use obtrusive ads that block you from doing what you came to do on a site. Um, or they're totally unresponsive when you first load them. Uh, what's happened is that the, the need to monetize has created bloated sites uh, and bad user experience in a lot of cases. And it's not just this trade-off of monetization versus performance. Uh, creating a fast, functional, and beautiful mobile site often takes a lot of effort and constant updates. Uh, it's not always easy to do all the things you need to do to make your site performant. Uh, the, all of these are why the AMP project was started. Uh, it's meant to help publishers and other webmasters and developers create fast web experiences that are straightforward uh, to create and to manage. It's essentially a turnkey solution to having a performance site with good UX. And by publishing in the AMP for format, your pages are going to be fast. Um, and they'll also avoid many of the big user experience pitfalls. And the idea is that you can do all this while retaining your ability to style the page and also retain the look and feel of your brand. And on top of that, uh, AMP pages are distributed across a range of consumer platforms. Uh, this includes Bing, uh, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium, Pinterest, and more. And what these platforms do is they link to AMP pages and provide greater opportunities for distribution. Um, so uh, your pages appear across all of these platforms. So what is AMP actually made of? Uh, technically, uh, AMP is built on three core components. Uh, and it's the combination of these three elements that yields the super fast AMP experience. First, uh, there's AMP HTML. Uh, this is a restricted subset of HTML. And it's restricted in order to work well with the other pieces, like AMP.js, which is a JavaScript library that implements AMP's best practices for performance and manages resource loading to ensure that the page renders quick, quickly. And finally, the AMP cache fetches AMP pages and caches them. And this improves page performance by delivering the document in a way that doesn't depend on a round trip to the publisher's origin. Uh, and AMP cache also validates pages to ensure that only valid AMP pages are displayed to users, uh, which is to say, we know, and the cache knows, and these platforms know that these pages are actually using AMP uh, as intended, using the guidelines and using these technologies. And one really nice thing about AMP is that it doesn't require a large development team and budget uh, because it builds on existing skill sets that most web developers already have, uh, or on top of the existing framework of sites built on CMSs like WordPress. And it's flexible. AMP supports a broad range of layout, style, and functionality. Uh, to say, 
uh, represent the distinctive style of your brand look and feel. You can see that all these pages have a fairly different layout and, uh, and look and feel. Um, but AMP is also meant to support the functional elements that, say, encourage onward journeys to other parts of your site, like social sharing and embeds and, and hamburger menus, uh, to enable elements that make the experience more engaging, like video and image galleries, and also elements that essentially help users to achieve what they came to your site to do. Uh, and that includes things like forms and even dynamically updating live blogs if the real purpose that the user came there for is live updating super fresh um, and ongoing uh, content. The AMP format is also extremely flexible in choosing the right ad experiences for your users. Um, but there shouldn't be a trade-off of uh, revenue here. Uh, you should be able to have choices on ad server and demand sources, uh, as well as sizes and formats. And in fact, there are over 70 ad tech integrations that help you replicate your existing monetization models. AMP also supports paywalls and subscriptions. This means that you can segment your audience to offer more access to content just for your subscribers. And uh, also, many third-party analytics and view viewability providers are also supported uh, to ensure you can track engagement and ROI. <clears throat> And much like AMP supports design flexibility, AMP supports many different types of ads as well. You can see here banner ads, uh, sticky ads, flying carpet, which is this sort of more engaging but not obtrusive um, ad format, uh, as well as promoted content and, of course, video ads. And I alluded to this before, um, but we know that it's important to measure how your website performs. And AMP has been fortunate enough to get support from many analytics providers whose services uh, can then work with AMP. And the same is true for ad tech providers. And in many cases, you can continue working with your existing partners and services in ads, analytics, video, and social. Uh, but in the end, you really shouldn't take our word for it. Uh, when it comes to the benefits of implementing AMP, uh, many publishers and websites around the world are seeing solid business results with AMP, as you can see here, uh, from increased engagement and retention to audience growth and monetization. Uh, AMP is really intended and built to meet or improve your existing KPIs. Um, so what's next? Uh, well, depending on your current process, uh, publishing AMP pages could be as simple as installing a plugin compatible uh, with your content management system, or CMS, to automatically create AMP pages for you. Uh, or uh, it could be adjusting your templates uh, to generate AMP pages directly. Uh, there are how-tos and complete documentation for AMP, and those are located in the pro on the project's website, ampproject.org. You can dive in there to help guide more custom applications. And the AMP community is growing. Uh, a growing third-party ecosystem provides support for AMP pages, including CMS, audio and video media support, uh, and analytics. And we're seeing lots of engagement from the community with questions and feature requests. And honestly, we love hearing from users in this way. We want to hear what your needs are and, and uh, what's missing or even what you like in AMP. So um, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, and welcome to AMP. I'm going to uh, pass this back to Tomo, or <laughs> Tom, and, uh, and see if we have any, uh, any questions that we can help answer. Thank you so much, Eric. That was really great. Um, we don't have any questions on the live chat. So if there are any questions that you have after uh, watching and listening to Eric run through uh, the deck today, then uh, as Eric mentioned, hit us up on the AMP project GitHub or Stack Overflow, and we'll do our best to get back to you. So thanks, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Bye, everyone. <laughs>